Whatever you expect of Russia, you will be surprised and delighted by what you find there. Forget all those old tales about hard-faced KGB trained tourist guides and everybody trying to buy your old pair of jeans. Russia's not like that now. Since the political changes of the early 90s, Russia is more welcoming. Tourists are encouraged to explore on their own and new shops and cafes are opening every day. Our Riverside Hotel in Moscow was the Rosaya, which claims to be the biggest in the world with over 5,000 beds. Some people consider it to be an architectural eyesore in the midst of some of the most beautiful buildings in the world. But for us, its situation was perfect. On the corner of Red Square, with views from the windows of the Kremlin and St. Basil's Cathedral. With Red Square on the doorstep, it seems an obvious place to start. It was strange standing in this area that we all knew so well from television newsreels. It seemed somehow smaller than expected, with the red walls of the Kremlin lining one side, the cream frontage of Goom store on the other, and the extraordinary outline of St Basil's Cathedral at the end. The Kremlin was originally a fortress built on a strongly defended site above the river in 1156. At that time it was just a tall wooden palisade protecting a small trading settlement. Through the period of communist rule it was associated with government offices, but modern tourists mainly come to see the remains of the Tsarist period, when people like Ivan the Terrible lived there. There are actually three cathedrals in the Kremlin. The Tsars use one for christenings, one for marriages, and one for funerals. If there's one image that will stay in our minds from Moscow, it would be the onion domes on all the churches, many covered in gold leaf. It seemed astounding that so many had survived the atheistic years of Soviet control. Since the end of communist rule, there has been a growing revival of religious belief in Russia. The Saviour's Cathedral is actually new. It's a reconstruction of the cathedral that Stalin had destroyed that's being built on the same site to match old plans and photographs. Just outside Moscow, at Sergievo Posad, is one of the Russian Orthodox Church's most important religious centres. The monastery guards the tomb of Saint Sergievo and attracts pilgrims from all over Russia. icons in the chapel are magnificent, with candlelight flickering on silver and gold. Outside, the monastery grounds were packed with people seeking spiritual support. Many had come to take the spring water, which is thought to have healing powers.
It was interesting to see how the balance of attitudes has changed since Gorbachev's reforms. While there are more people visiting churches, the queue to see the embalmed body of Lenin in his mausoleum is getting shorter. The police still search visitors, but when I asked a Russian if I could film the changing of the guards on Lenin's tomb, as mentioned in the guidebooks, I was told that there were no guards now because he has vanished into history. It's indicative of the continuing honour that Russians still give to all those who fought for their country, that the guards remain at the tomb of the unknown soldier. The tomb is in Alexandrovsky Gardens, which is a popular place to relax, particularly on a hot summer's day. Another honeypot for tourists is the Arbat district. This has now been pedestrianised and is full of street entertainers and artists whose work was banned only eight years ago. The new spirit of free market economics now encourages any form of private enterprise, from selling t-shirts to Red Army surplus uniforms. While we were there, the Russian economy was in dire straits and many old people were forced to sell anything to supplement their very meagre pension. These were not commercially organised lace makers with a pile of stock to choose from. Once this was sold, the lady would return home to make another. Some simply sold wild mushrooms that they had just picked or jars of homemade pickles. At least their stock didn't try to run away. This compares dramatically with the Goom store on Red Square. It was built a hundred years ago as the department store for the very rich and privileged. It's now been privatised with many small businesses, but still retains its original splendour as one of the oldest shopping malls in the world. The physical act of getting around Moscow is very easy on the metro system. Trains are speedy and very cheap, with a fixed price for any length of journey. What is so enjoyable is the quality of the stations. They are built of marble, some with chandeliers and beautiful artwork representing important historical figures. The people are obviously proud of their metro and keep it free of graffiti. However, 
it does help to be able to read Russian lettering to know where you are. Another pleasant way to travel across the city is on the water buses that ply regularly along the river Moskva. Walking back from the river to Red Square, the first building that you come to is St Basil's Cathedral. It was built in 1560 by Ivan the Terrible to celebrate a victory over the Tartars. Its array of domed turrets is one of the classic images of Moscow, inspired by traditional Russian timber architecture. Its original colouring was red with white highlights. The colours we see now were first painted on in 1670. Sleep. 